For what purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House uh, suspend the rules and pass H.R. 4803 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 385, H.R. 4803, a bill to require the Transportation Security Administration to conform to existing federal law and regulations regarding criminal investigator positions and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Sanford, and the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Richmond, each will control 20 minutes. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from South Carolina. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous that all members have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include any extraneous materials on the bill under consideration. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Well, I take that back since I see uh, my chairman right here. Uh, should I yield to you, sir? From North Carolina is recognized. I thank the gentleman, and I thank him for his work on this important piece of legislation. Um, I rise in strong support of H.R. 4803, the TSA Office of Inspection Accountability Act of 2014. Uh, again, I'd like to commend the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Sanford, for developing this common sense bill, which increases accountability within TSA and saves precious taxpayer dollars by requiring the agency to correctly designate criminal investigators within the Office of Inspection. According to the Department of Homeland Security Inspector General, TSA does not ensure that its criminal investigators in the Office of Inspection are meeting the federal workload requirements for law enforcement officers, even though they're considered law enforcement officers and are receiving premium pay and other benefits. If nothing's done to correct this problem, the misclassification will cost taxpayers roughly $17 million over the next five years. This type of waste is simply unacceptable. As chairman of the Subcommittee on Transportation Security, I held a hearing on this topic and was both surprised and encouraged to hear the head of the Office of Inspection admit that his office would reduce the number of criminal investigator positions based on the office's workload. Although an acknowledgment is a step in the right direction, TSA needs to go one step further. It's time for them to take real action on this issue and achieve tangible results, which is precisely what this legislation requires. In addition to ensuring that the proper classification of criminal investigators the Committee on Homeland Security agreed to an amendment offered by the ranking member for the full committee, Mr. Thompson, that would require TSA to submit to Congress any materials associated with the Office of Inspection's review of the use of federal firearms license by the Federal Air Marshal Service officials and to obtain discounted or free firearms for their own personal use, as well as specific actions that will be taken to prevent air marshals from exploiting their positions to obtain free or discounted firearms for vendors for their personal use. I've been concerned with TSA's failure to notify Congress of the ongoing Office of Inspection investigations into potential unethical activity related to the acceptance of free and discounted firearms by personnel, personal use among FAMS employees, including senior officials. I'm pleased this bill would ensure the committee receives access to information that is necessary to carry out its important oversight role. I urge my colleagues to support the bill, and I um, yield back my time to the gentleman from South Carolina. Gentleman from North Carolina yields back. Gentleman from South Carolina reserves. I do, gentleman sir. Gentleman from Louisiana. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in strong support of H.R. 4803, the TSA Office of Inspection Accountability Act of 2014, and I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Again, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Committee on Homeland Security is tasked with conducting oversight over the various components within Department of Homeland Security. As a ranking member of the Subcommittee on Transportation Security, I have a particular interest in ensuring that the Transportation Security Administration is operating both effectively and efficiently. Thanks to the Department of Homeland Security Inspector General, we learned late last year that the Office of Inspection is not operating efficiently. Specifically, we learned that this office was designating some personnel as criminal investigators who did not perform investigative duties to justify such a classification or the salary and benefits conferred a person with that title. H.R. 4803 seeks to address this problem by requiring TSA to certify that all persons designated as criminal investigators are working on criminal investigations at least 50% of their time. 
There's no justification for providing personnel the enhanced benefits and pay associated with criminal investigators when they are not doing the job of a criminal investigator. This legislation is not intended to punish the entire Office of Inspection. It, recogni it recognizes that there are legitimate criminal investigators within the office that have undoubtedly helped to thwart plots and other criminal enterprises that put our nation at risk. This legislation simply encourages good government and the careful stewardship of taxpayer dollars. We need to ensure that the resources are used effectively so that we can keep citizens safe while operating at maximum efficiency. This legislation is a step in the right direction. With that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Louisiana reserves. The gentleman from South Carolina. I would yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. And, and I would uh, thank the gentleman from North Carolina for his leadership on the, on the subcommittee. I would say the same to my colleague from Louisiana for, for their respective pieces of work on this important bill. As has already been noted by both of my colleagues, 4803 uh, calls for, I guess, the institution of a fairly simple premise, and that is we pay for what we get in government. That's what they do in the private sector. That's what individuals do in the household. And if you stop and think about it, you know, y y you wouldn't pay somebody who could run a backhoe or a bulldozer, uh, heavy equipment, if you will, if all you needed was somebody who could run a shovel. Uh, you, you wouldn't pay a, a chemical engineer to come and clean your pool uh, or mix the chemicals in a pool. You, you wouldn't hire Wolfgang Puck to come over and fix you a piece of grilled cheese. I mean, it may the, be the greatest piece of, of, of cheese you could find, but it isn't what you'd be paying for. And so this bill incorporates that common sense notion of in government, we ought to get what we pay for. And as already been noted, you know, criminal investigators in this case do not meet federal standards with regard to the 50 percent threshold. This bill does a couple of very, very simple things. It, it, it sets in place a standard by which to track whether or not they're doing so. And for the, the work that isn't to that standard, it, it eliminates this additional pay, the so-called lead pay. Lead pay is law enforcement available lead pay. And as already been noted, again, there's a 25 percent premium, but in many cases this is a, the tip of the iceberg. Because if you look at additional benefits in terms of early retirement or enhanced training, there's a real cost to the taxpayer that goes with continuing the road that we've been on. This, this bill attempts to change that. Uh, it has teeth and it freezes any hiring in the Office of Inspection going forward if these changes aren't made. And as, as my colleague from North Carolina just noted, um, they're real savings, $17 million. It's, it's small in, by federal standards, but you think about how many neighborhoods it takes to accumulate $17 million in taxes. It's a step in the right direction in saving taxpayer money. And for all those reasons, I uh, urge additional support of this bill. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from South Carolina reserves. Gentleman from Louisiana. I have no more. Uh, I have no more speakers. I'm prepared to close. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from South Carolina. Uh, with that, I, I suppose I would yield to my chairman from North Carolina if he has any additional comment. Gentleman from North Carolina. Well. I believe we're prepared to close. If the gentleman from Louisiana would like to close first, we'll be happy to, to close. Gentleman from South Carolina Reserves. Gentleman from Louisiana. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as gentleman's I recognize. Right. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I would just like to thank the gentleman from South Carolina, uh, Mr. Sanford, for introducing this piece of legislation, and uh, the chairman of the subcommittee, Chairman Hudson, and, of course, our ranking member, uh, Mr. Benny Thompson, for the bipartisan work on this bill and, and what this bill stands for is just a common sense approach to government and making sure that uh, we pay for what we get and, uh, and it's that very simple premise. So I'm honored to be standing here today with my colleagues from the other side of the aisle to just do something that makes common sense and with that uh, I will urge my colleagues to support it and I will yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from South Carolina. I would yield to my chairman. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and again, thank you to the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Sanford, for this common sense legislation. And, and also, I'd like to thank the ranking member of the committee, uh, Mr. Richmond, for uh, not only his work on this bill, but in the way we've worked together uh, to make a difference for the American people. You know, the American people sent us to Congress uh, to get things done and to make their lives better and to make sure that we're scrutinizing every tax dollar to spend here. 
And I think this piece of legislation, as my colleague from Louisiana said, is a common sense piece of legislation that does just that. And so um, I'm, I'm proud to stand here in support of it. I'm proud of the work that Mr. Sanford uh, put into this bill, and I would urge my colleagues to vote for this piece of legislation. With that, I will yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen, so yield. Gentlemen from South Carolina. All that has been said, uh, could be said, has been said, and with that, I would yield back as well. Gentlemen, yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 4803 as amended? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table.